Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the 13th ranked Panthers will be looking for some other faces to step up in the absence of LeVance Field. For Pitt, they'll be hosting Lafayette. This is their final tune-up before Big East Conference play begins. Welcome to college basketball here on ESPNU. It's Lafayette out of the Patriot League against the Panthers of Pittsburgh, who've fallen from 6th to 13th in just a week. I'm John Sanders along with Mark Adams. We're inside the Peterson Event Center, and what a wild ride it's been in the last two weeks. The highlight was that dramatic victory over Duke in Madison Square Garden, the disappointment Saturday against Dayton, and two devastating losses in their starting lineup. Well, Mike Cook now out for the season. LeVance Field reportedly will be out for 8 to 12 weeks. There you see their numbers, but Jamie Dixon will be looking at some different lineups tonight, and it's all about defense when you talk about Pitt Panther basketball, and Jamie Dixon has challenged his squad to step up defensively here tonight. And just because those two guys are not here doesn't mean we have some stars to watch. We definitely do on both teams here tonight. Let's take a look. If you love great long-range bombers, you're going to love this game tonight. Andrew Brown, 48% from three. And Sam Young, a guy that can slash, dash, dish, and also go up and knock down the tray. A tremendous rebounder as well. Sam Young has carried this Pitt Panther team on his back. My man, let's go. And obviously there will be more pressure on his back tonight without the presence of Cook and Fields. The fans are here, although this is break time at the University of Pittsburgh. Let's take a look at our... Starting lineups tonight on ESPNU, Brown, Bruner, Abdullah, Bentley, and Schmidt, the starting five for the Leopards, for the Panthers. Benjamin Sr. gets the start in place of Fields. Ramon, the other guard, Young, Brown, and Blair. And Gilbert Brown making just his second start. He started against Dayton in the absence of Cook. Now, Gilbert Brown will have to step up tonight. And, you know, when you talk about Pitt Panther basketball, it starts on the defensive end. And, John, it's not just about the points, the assists, the rebounds. It's who can make stops defensively for Jamie Dixon. And with a guy like Brown on the floor who could bomb it from three, Pitt's got to dig it and play some half-court defense. They rarely use and lose in this building. As a matter of fact, the only time they've lost a non-conference game here was three years ago today. And that was a shocker because Bucknell won on to be in the NCAA tournament, and they beat Peters. They beat Pittsburgh at the peak. Our referee tonight is Brian Kersey, Earl Walton, John Gaffney, the other officials. We're underway. Ronald Ramon playing with a, shore, a sore shoulder. There are the officials. He was re-injured in the Dayton game. He had the problem with his left shoulder a couple of years ago. Had that operated on. This is his right shoulder. Benjamin. Brown. Benjamin for three. On the way. Good. Well, that's the kind of start you like to see for Keith Benjamin. We'll play a lot more minutes now with LeVance Field sitting and, of course, Mike Cook out for the season. This is Brown, the sharpshooter. They dump it inside. Bentley gets it back. Looks to Brown. Ramon on him. Starts a move down the lane, dishes it off inside. It's out of bounds and touched last by Pitt. Jamie Dixon, what success he's had, but the real challenge is going to come, I think, starting tonight. He's had such great early season success, almost no injuries, and there's the answer out of the hands of Bentley to tie it up. But now he's got to deal with a short bench. Well, and he's going to be a lot more concerned about defensively if they can get out and pressure these Lafayette shooters who shoot 41% as a team from three. And if Lafayette starts banging threes, this will be a close ball game. Blair inside. Nice dish in reverse by Young. Set up by Blair, and Sam Young goes underneath to finish it off. Well, I love that freshman, Dewan Blair. He's a guy that has great vision. He sees his teammates. He saw his ability to assist. He also leads his team in steals. Sets up Benjamin. Young runs the court, tracks it down, spins, and they'll set up in half court. Benjamin the dump down. Blair makes the catch and the finish. Three great decisions on three straight possessions. The assist. The steal, seven feet three inches from fingertip to fingertip, gets his hands on a lot of balls for the steals, not the other end to convert. Of course, the one thing they don't want him to do in going for those steals is pick up those ticky-tack fouls. That three-pointer is short. Benjamin skies for the rebound. He's like got he Ramon did. on the wing. Blair ahead, spins up, left-hand miss. Rebound goes out of bounds. Touch last, they say, by Blair. So the Leopards will have it back. Head coach for the 13th season. 
in Easton at College Hill is Fran O'Hanlon, 179 victories there, two-time coach of the year, won some championships in the Patriot League. When he came, the team that he inherited had won a total of two games the year before. He's done a tremendous job at Lafayette for a lot of years now, and he's a guy that has earned his stripes, a high school coach, former player overseas, and international coach as well. 33% shooter Matt Bentley gets his second three-pointer, and we have a one-point game, and that's that three-pointer you talked about. They need to defend it. Lafayette is 8-4 and four this year. They lost to Robert Morris the other night because they did not shoot the three-ball well, but when Lafayette shoots it well, they are a tough, tough matchup for the Pitt Panthers. It was deflected. Benjamin tried to keep it in bounds. Ramon on a drive will feed Young for three, and he calmly nails it from the corner. Uh, Sam Young, very, very athletic, talented young man. You leave giving that good of a look, he's going to knock down the three. Sam Young for Pitt. Bruner with a look and then a move. Abdullah goes inside, deflected by Blair. That's well short, and Brown has the rebound. The Leopards may have to pay income tax. They've been in Moon Township so long. That's where Robert Morris is located. That's where they stayed. That's where they practiced. They've been here since last Saturday. Rebound brought down by Betley, a senior from New Jersey, and it'll be Panther basketball. Well, John, a lot of times on those long road trips, you can kind of get a little bit stale being on the road, staying in the hotel the whole time, but Fran O'Hanlon's certainly a guy that has got a lot of stripes on his belt, he understands how to keep his team motivated, keep his team prepared. This is the sixth of eight straight road games for Lafayette. They are three and two so far in that stretch. They had one three straight until they lost at Robert Morris, deflected out of bounds. Touch last by DeWan Blair. So once again, Lafayette will get it back. Denver checks into the lineup for Lafayette. The Leopards two of three shooting threes, the Panthers two of two, and they've been very good offensively in the Patriot League standings. And 45% of the total team shots come from behind the arc, just like that one. They'll load it up all night long. So Bilal Abdullah, who's averaging almost 13 a game, makes it a one-point game again. The third three-pointer already in this first half for Lafayette. Bilal Abdullah also shoots 40% from the three-point line. When you've got a team that shoots 41% from three, you know that there's one game plan. Extend on the shooters, get in their face. So far, Pitt a little bit soft on the perimeter. Well, the one thing they didn't do at Robert Morris, that's a three-pointer that won't go, but Blair on the weak side with a rebound and will be charged with a foul. First foul of the ball game goes on to Juan Blair. The Panthers have a one-point early lead. ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by EAS. Don't waste your workout. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center. There's plenty of snow on the ground outside. Inside, it's a one-point lead, and Lafayette, as expected, staying in it with three three-pointers. Levance Fields had a pin put in that foot. They say eight to ten weeks. They're hoping maybe it might be a little sooner than that, but you can see you're missing a lot there. 47% of the assists, that's the key stat. Well, certainly from a coaching perspective, Jamie Dixon now, it's not just the numbers that off the court, it's also the numbers in your practice situations. How hard do you scrimmage? You only have nine scholarship players, so how hard do you scrimmage? How hard do you push the envelope? Who gets hurt next? You're constantly worrying about that as a head coach. And Brown hits the three-pointer. That's four already for the Leopards. They have their first lead up 12-10. That's what a hot shooting team can do to you. And believe me, the Panthers found that out when they played at Dayton the other night. I'm very surprised that Lafayette getting a lot of quality looks early. And you mentioned that 80 to 55 drubbing of the Dayton Flyers over then number six pick when Pitt was healthy at that time. LeVance Fields played in that game. LeVance Fields was injured with about 15 minutes to go. He was on a drive, headed toward the sideline under the baseline. They didn't really have a good shot of it during the game, but we're told that Tony Solis, the trainer, knew immediately that he had broken his foot. There now, wasn't any doubt about it. And he'll be out now, they say, for, for 8 to 12 weeks. But, you know, i got to think, as tough as he is and with the, the type of medical technology people have today, I'm thinking more 6 to 8 weeks. I think that kid's going to find a way to get back. 
Bruner picks up the foul, and here's what the pit depth chart looks like right now. You've got the two seniors who started tonight. A lot of pressure falls on that true freshman, Bradley Wanamaker. And of course, Gilbert Brown is in the lineup at the present time. He's got the ball. Well, Jamie Dixon and his staff were talking about they wanted to get Bradley Wanamaker some more minutes. Sometimes you got to be careful what you wish for. That's right. You get it in some unusual ways. Tyrell Biggs has checked into the lineup for the Panthers. He'll get more minutes. Wanamaker's out there as well. He makes a bad pass, and it's stolen by Gruner. Brown turns. Gruner gets it back along the baseline. That one is blocked. Goes out of bounds as Ramon and Young got together and couldn't hang on. So with a two-point lead, Lafayette, out of the Patriot League, will get it back. Mentioned game number 13 for both these teams. There you see Jamie Dixon, very positive with his team. He knows that they're challenged right now from a depth perspective, even a talent perspective a little bit for Big East standards with Levance Fields being on the bench. So you've got to really step up your emotional level as a head coach to bring your team up to their level as well. Inside penetration and a nice finish on the dump down pass by Marek Coulter. Mark Coulter off the bench gets the first two-point basket, and they stretch it to their largest lead of the half, up four. Pitt is a team that's out of sync right now, especially defensively. Ramon for three, hits the deck, he'll shoot three. Remember, Ramon bothered by a shoulder problem. He injured the shoulder in the Dayton game, but had to come back on the court after Fields went off and played the rest of the ball game. Well, Ronald Ramon, 69% of his total shots come from behind the arc, and his numbers are down this year as you can see last season 8.8 .8 points per game this season 6.9 and look at the three-point shooting percentage down 13 percent that shoulder injury has to have some type of bearing on his shooting stroke right now i think you're right talking to assistant orlando oh, antigua i said by the way i said uh, ronald got a haircut he said yeah i used to be six feet tall now he's <laughs> five seven <laughs> i wish i had his hair <laughs> One out of two so far. It was a 14 of 18 free throw shooter coming in to tonight. It's his first point of the ball game. Cummins checks in now for Lafayette. And two out of three at the free throw line for a good true shooter, the senior from the Bronx, Ronald Ramon. Makes it a two point ball game and Brown will walk it up. Detmer is in backcourt with him. Detmer has it on a drive and travels. Turnover for the Leopards and their head coach, Fran O'Hanlon. Some of his players, we'll show you a list later, are from other countries, but uh, not because they went to the other countries to go get them. Most of them played in this country, and that's where they saw them. Wanamaker for three. That's short. Sam Young with a putback. Seven for Young. Well, I love his all-around game. He's putting up Big East, all Big East type numbers. 17 and a half points a game, shooting 48% from three. He's doing it all for the Panthers. He's got to do more now. That's going to be a foul, an offensive foul called on Ted Detmer. The senior from Scarsdale picks up the foul. Let's follow. Watch Sam Young with the follow shot here. One of the disadvantages of playing in the zone, it's hard to get a body on a guy. And right there, Sam Young comes up with the right-handed rim rattler. Brown will check out of the lineup for the first time, and also heading to the bench is Everett, Everett Smith. And checking in for the first time is Jeff Carey, a transfer from East Carolina University. 14-14 ball game. We're talking to Fran O'Hanlon before the game. There's two things you worry about when you play up from the Patriot League to the Big East. One is turnovers. The other is rebounds. We saw Sam Young going to the offensive glass there. That one won't go. And the rebound foul is going to go on Sam Young. Well, Young will pick up his first foul. Another sub in the ball game. Women's college basketball continues on ESPNU Wednesday night. Candace Parker leads the Tennessee Lady Vols against the DePaul Blue Demons. Women's college basketball on ESPNU Wednesday night at 9 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Brown Parker. Brandon. Candace Parker heading home to Chicago in that one. They're going to sell right? that thing out. I yeah. bet they do. Big game in Chicago. Brown not out of the lineup very long for Lafayette. He's back out there. He's got the ball. That's Carey. Kick it over to Cummins. He's from Ireland. The Pitt's defense really extending now the three-point line, much more aggressive. But Brown so quick with his shot. As a matter of fact, Coach O'Hanlon said sometimes he's too quick with that shot. And that was a good example of it right there where he rushed the jump shot. 
Wanamaker, who played great during the summertime, but has really not found his groove in his true freshman year here with Pitt. Well, he's going to get his chance. Here comes Young to the baseline. Benjamin off the glass and good. That's his second basket. Young gets the assist, and that's the one thing the Panthers do. They get a lot of assists. They get a lot of assists. They also can pound it inside. They got some tweener guys who can play on the perimeter and go down low. And good help defense to cut off that drive. Back to Brown on the outside. Dumps it inside now. This is Schmidt. Little backdoor play deflected. Touched last by Sam Young. And two more subs coming in as Bentley will return to the lineup. And Jared Mintz will also check in now. They will go at least 10 deep. They've got 13 players, and we've seen about 10 so far for Lafayette. I like the spacing of Lafayette. They spread the floor well, and you've got to guard them because they shoot the three ball so well. Gives them some back cuts. Gives them dribble penetration to the basket avenues. Brown with it. Now Carey starts to drive on Ramon. They cut him off. It's knocked away by Benjamin. And the shot clock violation doesn't matter because they turned it over anyway. Ramon almost lost it, but manages to get around Carey and get it back. Here comes Brown down the lane with the left hand, lays it off the glass. And good. Nice move by the redshirt freshman, played in three games last year before he was injured. Uh, Gilbert Brown, a guy that started tonight, gifted athlete. He could take the ball to the rack. And, but right now, I like Pitt's defense. They're extending. They're more aggressive. This type of Panther defense I expected coming in this ball game. And that three-pointer will cut off an 8-0 run as nailing the ball was Cummins. Panthers had scored eight unanswered to build a four-point lead, matching their largest, and it's back to one again. That three-pointer is really a weapon for these Leopards. John, it's amazing. Paul Cummins, almost 80% of his total shots come from behind the arc. They love the three ball. The Leopards of Lafayette. The Bigs that time thought he made it, turned up feet, turned up court, and didn't follow his own shot. That's a three for the lead. Third one in the first half by Matt Bentley. And Jamie Dixon, I think, has seen enough. It's 20 to 18. Lafayette is back on top. Six three-pointers already made in this ball game tonight by Lafayette. That's their big weapon, and that's the reason they have the lead. Quick timeout. It's 20 to 18. I'm John Sanders with Mark Adams. And you called it. These guys can shoot the threes. They've now made as many as they made the entire game against Robert Morris the other night. They can really load it up and knock down the three. And so far, Pitt having a tough time getting back defensively and getting out to the shooters. And almost and is turned over. Carey comes up with it. That's another three on the way, and it nails it. The Hot second one for Cummins. Defense. It's a 9-0 run back the other way, and the largest lead of the half now belongs to Lafayette. They're up five. Pitt Laf had an 8-0 run. They have a 9-0 a run. Lafayette will settle in that 2-3 zone, and they are making Pitt's transition defense pay. Nice drive and finish that time by Keith Benjamin. Now has seven. Abdullah with a dump down. That's blocked by Blair out of bounds. And it will take us to a timeout. With 10.05 remaining in the opening half here on ESPNU. It's 23-20. The Panthers have the lead, but the, or the uh, Leopards have the lead thanks to the trade. The Leopards are on pace to set a school record for three-pointers. They might get it tonight the way they're going. Well, we came in here knowing that 45% of the total shots from Lafayette are going to come from behind the arc. And look at the spacing offensively. They spread out their offense. They're going inside out, getting the ball in the paint, either off the dribble or off the pass. And there you see wide open three-point shooters for Lafayette coming up and down. And there's the trailer right there as you have Bentley coming down. And look at the defense. Three white jerseys all surround the basket while shooters flare to the wings. And John, that's a recipe for defensive disaster for Pitt right there. Lafayette will knock him down. Seven of nine, and the guy you're looking at, Bentley, is three for three so far. Remember when the three-point shot came in, people said it's going to ruin the game? I think it's done exactly the opposite. I think it's done a lot for college basketball. Well, now the three-point line will be moved back next year to rule change from 19-9 to, to 20 feet, nine inches. Abdullah for three. Yes, sir. Another one. That's eight so far. They stretch the lead to six, so the run continues. They're on a 12-0 march right now. 
of the Patriot League is over 500 in their non-conference games. And this is a this is a league right now that's really playing great top to bottom. And Lafayette, one of them is leading the way at eight and four. The follow goes and a foul. Tyrell Biggs will get the basket. It is counted. The foul goes on Bentley. That'll be his first. So Biggs to the line as Brown checks back in. Heading to the bench now is Ben Wheeler. They've already played 11 guys here in the first half. Now looking for a lot of different lineups here. And Tyrell Biggs, you saw his ability to offensively rebound the ball. He has more offensive rebounds than defensive rebounds. The whole scouting report on Biggs, keep him off the glass. Very athletic, great hands, great finisher around the basket. Well, midway through, there's other good news for the Panthers. Only one foul so far on Dewan Blair. Remember, he was in foul trouble against the Dayton Flyers. And that was a big part of that game with Juan Blair in foul trouble throughout that basketball game. And the Dayton Flyers took it down to Kurt Hillsman and company and just pounded it in the post. Of course, Brian Roberts with 31 points in that game. And he made, what, five three-pointers in that game or six, something like that. He was on fire. Abdullah looks inside, nothing there. This is Brown. Shot clock at five. Brown will shoot a three. Too strong. Young has the rebound. Back come the Panthers, trailing by three. On a drive, nice up and under move that time by Benjamin, who's playing well in the starting role. Nine for him. The leads pit in scoring. It's a one-point game. Now injuries are tough to overcome, but they can be a blessing because guys can step up like Keith Benjamin and show that he's ready for Big East play. Bentley, no three-pointer that time. Abdullah will shoot one. A little bit short, but tipped back and kept alive that time by Cummins. So a fresh clock at 8.20 remaining in the half. One point lead for the Leopards of Lafayette. And the last and only non-conference team to win a game here came from the Patriot League. That was Bucknell three years ago to the day. There's Bentley's three again, and he is red hot. That's his fourth in the first half. Remember, early on, Lafayette got great looks from the three-point line, and when shooters, it's, it gets contagious. When they can look at the ball, see the basket, knock it down early, and get some confidence, it becomes a layup for them. Right now, that basket is huge for the Lafayette Leopards. Foul before the basket, so no basket. Schmidt will pick up his second foul for Lafayette. They continue to shoot lights out from three-point land. Happy New Year from the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Lafayette leading the Pitt Panthers 29 to 25 with 7.42 to go in the first half. They are 9 of 13 shooting threes. Mark and the difference in the game. Both teams are 10 of 17, but most of the Leopards have been threes instead of twos. That makes up for a lot of illnesses when you can knock down threes. Lafayette only one for four from two point range, but nine for 13 from behind the arc. Young pulls up for a jump, comes up short, gets it back. Fights his way back up again, no foul called, and still Young has it, hits the deck. And a foul is called now. And Brown had something to say about that. And he's going to pick up a foul. Fran O'Hanlon doesn't like the call, but Pitt's best offense right now is throw it up and go get it. Mark Coulter picked up the foul, number 54. 725 to play in the first half. And I think everybody who follows Pitt basketball was interested to see how they would come out tonight. Minus Levance Fields and coming off a 25-point loss to the Flyers. But after a big emotional victory over Duke where LeVance Fields hit one of the biggest shots of his career. And then really a trap game going in front of a sellout crowd in Dayton where that city is just possessed with their Dayton Flyers right now. Where it's ranked 23 in the country. And also Dayton was sitting on a 35 point loss from a year ago. There was a lot to prove for the Dayton Flyers and they proved it last Saturday night against the Pitt Panthers 80 to 55 in that final. Yeah, they returned the favor from the 30 point thumping they took here in the previous year when they thought they were pretty good. They came in as a one loss team and just got hammered here in Pitt. Knocked away that time knocked out of bounds by Brad Wanamaker. A true freshman who'll see a lot more minutes. In the absence of Levance Field this is Brown. 
Shot clock at 20. An easy steal that time on a bad pass. It was intended inside for Coulter, but an easy kick for Dewan Blair. The Panthers have possession. Young turns, has it knocked out of his hands, and Brown has it. He just sense a little bit of frustration here for Pitt as Lafayette could just come down, run their offense, get it set. John, we're talking about break. How long can this team continue to make threes like this? Well, Gardner Webb was able to do it at Kentucky. That's a two. Of the Power Six conferences, when we talk about the, the Big Ten, the Big East, the Big 12, the Pac-10, the ACC, and the SEC, those Power Six conferences have lost 70 games this year to bracket buster conferences. So it can be done in Lafayette right now, looking pretty good. Nice move, but missed shot by Blair. Gets it back and draws the foul. That'll be the second foul on Marek Coltern, who is from Poland, but played in high school in the United States. Good hard work by Dewan Blair. We're looking to just put it up and follow up. Look, you go up with two hands and then present the ball back up with two hands. I like the fact that the kid has great hands. He's got a good strength in his upper body. And as a freshman, we talk about all these great freshmen in the country. Michael Beasley, who I just saw the other night for Kansas State. Derek Rose for Memphis. Eric Gordon for Indiana. And what, Dewan Blair, he deserves to be in that pack as well. He plays with such a relaxed air and such great confidence, and he had a terrific high school career just down the road at Shenley High School. Two-point game again. Biggest lead of the half has belonged to Lafayette. They were up by six. The Panthers' biggest early lead was four. Right now it's 31-29. The Leopards lead. This is Brown with it. Into the lineup now is Darunas Vasakis playing for the first time. So he's used basically the entire roster here in the first half. Well, with the depth situation for Pitt, it's smart to keep Lafayette with some fresh legs. They've been on the road for so long, he's going to use his players. Brown for three. Quick That's draw. his second. That's that quick shot. It's 34-29. That time he was completely balanced. Andrew, Andrew Brown from downtown. And that makes him the third all-time three-point shooter in school history. Wanamaker tries to feed inside. It's a bad pass knocked away and picked up by Lafayette. Watch how Lafayette spreads the court. They constantly have great spacing, and they spread that defense out, draw a defender, and kick. You know, the other thing they don't do, they don't really hold the ball a lot. They keep it moving. A little dump off that time. That's got to be a hell ball. And the possession arrow, though, will keep it at this end. Checking back in is Matt Bentley, who has four of those three-pointers here in the first half. Andrew Brown has two. Bilal Abdullah has two. Paul Cummins has two. And Brown has a pair. What a weapon, huh? And they're just so spread, they use the weapon well. That's way deep. And picked off by Ronald Ramon. He'll push it ahead for the Panthers. On the wing, Wanamaker. Got it. One of the struggles for Wanamaker has been shooting the basketball. He's only shooting 35%, and it made just one of 10 three pointers. They're going to need more than that from him. But he's a kid that looks like he's got a pretty good stroke, good athlete, good follow through. He's going to be thrown into the fire now. That'll go on, Wanamaker. Brad picks up his first. For up-to-the-minute news for everything that is college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. This online service is a gateway to the best in college sports content. From ESPN, combining the latest news, scores, features, video highlights, podcasts, and much more. If you don't have ESPNU, log on to ESPNU.com. Type in your zip code at the top of the page or call your local cable operator or your satellite provider. Log on to ESPNU.com today. 4.35 to go on the half. Benjamin, who's played well getting the start replaces Brown who also started in this lineup but Wanamaker's out there along with Ramon Young and Dewan Blair those are the five for the Panthers and I think we'll see some interesting mixtures in the players that are on the court no question about it and while this pit team I think offensively is playing pretty well defensively they're in a tough time How extending about that on guy? the shooters that's five three-pointers for Bentley in the first half 15 in the game and a timeout for Pitt back to a six-point lead they've matched the largest of the half Bentley has five three-pointers. Brown has two. Abdullah has two. Cummins has two. They are shooting lights out in three-pointers. 
on pit defensively as you see all the jerseys that get into the paint. That's what gives the shooters the opportunity to shoot. On the game plan, there's no double down on the post, so there's no reason why a shooter should be that wide open to lock a cock and get a feet set and let it fly. Pit defenders are defending the basket right now instead of the shooters on the perimeter. Fifteen points for Bentley. His career high is 19, a 33 percent three-point shooter, and he has yet to miss in this game this evening. Wow. He's been a big guy. He's been able to trail in the fast break and knock down the three. They've played some inside-out basketball. He's been able to catch it face in the basket. He's been perfectly balanced on every single shot. Bentley's high this year is 17. His career is 19. Young starts a move, spins, lost the ball. And back the other way come the Leopards. So just a little subtle change of defense, extending out of the zone, took Pitt out of their offensive flow. That's where you see the value of LeVance Fields on that possession, not reacting to the defense, getting his team settled into an offensive flow. That's going to be a reach-in foul, the second. On Wanamaker, he'll pick up number two. That'll take us to a break with 3.52 to go. Don't be surprised by the scoreboard. The lead is six for the visitors. A reminder, stay with us at halftime on what a December it has been. Starting on December the 1st, when the Panthers shocked everybody in college football by knocking off West Virginia, a team they thought was headed to the championship game. And then that shocker in the garden, thanks to LeVance Fields, unfortunately, Fields is out for eight to ten weeks, depending on his recuperation. And at halftime, we'll be talking to the director of athletics here at Pitt, Steve Peterson, who's back for the second time around. There have been 27 substitutions in this game by Lafayette. They've used 12 of the 13 players on their roster. Young will pick up his second foul. Brown will check back in. Heading to the bench is Terry. And also returning to the lineup, Ted Detmer. And checking out is Jared Mintz. Only Darren Benbow. A freshman has not played so far for Lafayette. They have used the entire crew. And I guess for Fran O'Hanlon, having the players with no outside distractions for basically five days in one location, maybe that's a plus. You have a captive audience, that's for sure. You can spend a lot of time looking through video, breaking down games, working on individual skills. Obviously, that's been some time well spent. Brown with it. Benjamin cuts him off. Gets it back, spots for three, comes up short, the rebound by Ronald Ramon. Brown thought about a three-pointer there. The Panthers so far in the first half have made just a pair of trays. DeWan Blair short from outside. Brown will push it for Lafayette. They lead it by six, matching their biggest lead of the half. We're inside three minutes to play. Lafayette's really going to manage some clock here as we come down under three minutes to go in the first half. Blair went for the steal. The reverse doesn't go, but the foul will be called on Gilbert Brown. It will be his first. Let's take a look. On the mark, Patriot League picks. What do you think? Well, in the Patriot League preseason, Lafayette was picked for eighth. Right. I don't think so. I mean, I love Holy Cross with Ralph Willard. I think the player of the year is Tim Clifford. This Lafayette team with Andrew Brown and then Colgate and Bucknell. Bucknell with John Griffin, a coach's son. Of course, John, one of the real fine college coaches as well as at St. Joe's for a while. And then American Army, Lehigh, and Navy. But I think this Lafayette team was picked eighth in the coaches' poll. I like them at eight and four, and I like more what I see of them tonight. Maybe they will challenge Holy Cross in the Patriot League. Well, Fran O'Hanlon's been there before. He's gone to the NCAA tournament. He took over a more abundant program. In fact, at Central Connecticut, we played against this team and won at Marist. And that was in his first, the first season. And I've seen him just transform this Lafayette program into truly a great one in the Patriot League. Panthers trailing by their largest margin in the first half. Benjamin to Ramon. That's a three-pointer on the way, bending off and a rebound, fought for underneath and a putback by Tyrell Biggs. Give him five points so far. The major way that Pitt has been able to score points in the first half is off the offensive glass. Throw it up and chase it, huh? That's right. Best offense sometimes the simplest. How about that? An inside shot 
for Cummins. You haven't seen many of those. 40-33. There's a nice look inside. Again, it's Biggs. He has seven. You saw the struggles of the Panthers to score offensively. They're down by five. Biggs from player. Player with another assist inside. You better guard him. The Lafayette spread the floor. You constantly have cutters going to the basket. And their first thought is shoot the three. Baseline drive turned over. Panthers get it back. With a minute 15 to go in the half, and back into the lineup now comes Merrick Coulter. And to the bench goes Matt Bentley, who's had the great first half with five three-pointers. Also checking back in, Mike Gruner, as Brown will rest. Panthers hoping to creep closer here in the final minute 15 of the opening 20 minutes of basketball. Glad to have you with us tonight on ESPNU, and Happy New Year from Pittsburgh. Has played well. Getting his first start of the season. Blair. Foul line shot is good. He's got a pretty good touch. He's got a good touch from the elbow, and also we saw him with the pass inside on the high low earlier. He's a tremendous high post player, Dwan Blair for Pitt. That's the lead now to three. It's 40 to 37 as the Panthers have sliced into what had been a seven-point lead. Set to return for Lafayette is Matt Bentley. Now watch the nice smooth and the easy shot here for Blair. Just like that, shooting a free throw. Remember he had an assist on the last time. That time he just faces up and knocks down the medium range jump shot. This kid just has a tremendous future with Jamie Dixon here at Pitt. What a great kit of getting the inner city kid right here in Pittsburgh and bringing him from one mile from his house. Now, Duquesne thought they were also in the hunt for Dewan Blair because he was very close to Duquesne. Those yeah. two schools are next to each other, yeah, they basically. Really are. I drove by both on the way. That's true. And it didn't take long to get from one to the other. Ron Everhart's done a great job with that Duquesne program. And how about the Atlantic 10? Pretty good conference this year. Absolutely. If you don't believe it, ask the Panthers about Dayton. Abdullah on a drive. Offensive foul. We have not seen him drive very often, and it's cost them the basketball that time. Goes as a turnover. A chance for the Panthers to creep closer as Jeff Carey returns to the lineup for Lafayette along with Merrick Coulter. And he likes to do this at the end of a half or the end of the game. He'll play a little offense defense, will Coach O'Hanlon. Yeah, and that's a smart way to coach, I think. Every possession counts, and you might as well work on your late game situations at the end of every half, not just the second half. Biggs outside. Blair, Ramon with 30 seconds to go. I'm looking for Dewan Blair here. I'd love to get it to him on the block. You're a Pitt Panther fan. Benjamin gets to the baseline, steps up, and throws it in. How about that move? 11 now for Keith Benjamin. And a one point game as we head to halftime. Final 10 seconds. Look for the high screen. Here it comes. But nothing there for Carey. Now drives down the lane. Hits the deck, and that is a very disappointing foul at the end of the half with a six-tenths of a second left for Blair to pick up his second foul. They need him on the court. Jeff Carey came off that screen, lowered his shoulder. There's some contact there as Dewan Blair goes straight up in the air, and Jeff Carey goes, that's watch about to work. It's a tough call. I mean, there was definitely contact there, but it comes to a point is who initiated the contact? In my opinion, it was Jeff Carey. Misses number one, he'll get another. Trying to make it a two-point lead at halftime. One of two. We'll have a sub come in. Gruner will replace Carey. 41-39 is our score. Ramon at the buzzer. Comes up just short. He had it on target. But what a first half for the Leopards of Lafayette, especially Matt Bentley, who hit five three-pointers. 
His career high is 19. He's not far away. All he needs is a couple more trays, and he's the main reason that Dewan Blair and the Panthers will head to the locker room down by two. Interesting first half in Pittsburgh. O'Hanlon's club sharp shooting from three. They had the Panthers by seven. At intermission, they lead by two. Our ESPN U has time report is coming up. Welcome back to Pittsburgh and our ESPNU halftime report. The Leopards and the Panthers have played the first 20 minutes of basketball tonight. It is a brand new year, and what better way to start the new year for basketball folks than right here on ESPNU. 2008 is quickly approaching, and ESPNU is set to help you fulfill your New Year's resolution of more college hoops. We'll start January off right with an assortment of post-holiday goodies. The party begins Sunday, January 13th, with the Big East Showdown. Freshman forward Dante Green and the Syracuse Orange will have their hands full on the road against the 2007 NIT champs, West Virginia. Wednesday, January 16th, features an ACC in-state rivalry when high-flying Deron Washington and the Virginia Tech Hokies take on sharpshooting Sean Singletary and the Virginia Cavaliers. 2006 Cinderella George Mason hits the road Thursday, January 17th. They'll face colonial foe Hofstra in a hard-fought CAA clash. The Patriot League takes the stage Friday, January 18th, when Bucknell visits Tim Clifford in Holy Cross and a rematch of last year's conference championship. Big 12 action is on the menu on Saturday, January 19th. Mario Chalmers and the Kansas Jayhawks will look to establish some conference supremacy when they travel to Columbia to battle the Missouri Tigers. Believe the hype, Wednesday, January 23rd. Freshman phenom Michael Beasley will look to continue his national onslaught when Kansas State hits the road against Colorado and Boulder. We'll round out the month with another Big East battle on Wednesday, January 30th. Sophomore sensation Scotty Reynolds leads the Villanova Wildcats into a conference catfight against Sam Young and the Pitt Panthers. January will be one to remember when ESPNU kicks off the new year with big names and big games. Don't miss your chance to witness the action. And we have more to come as well here at the Peterson Event Center. When we come back, a visit with Steve Peterson, who's back as the Panthers Director of Athletics. That's next when we return with our ESPNU Halftime Report. Um, can I get a 20 on pump one, please? Gasoline specially formulated to help clean fuel injectors in five tanks, which helps you maximize mileage and reduce emissions. 76. Get the spirit. Woo! I got it. Now get big arms, a ripped chest, and cut abs with the perfect push-up. The perfect push-up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the perfect push-up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of a push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. You'll be ripped in no time. Get big fast. Call right now for the perfect push-up. Call 1-800-543-0427. Struggling with credit card debt? Is it difficult just making your minimum payments? Tired of the harassing calls? If you're on substantial credit card debt and need help, call now and settle your accounts for less than you owe. Call the Hermosa Group today to find out how you can quickly and easily eliminate your debt for less than you owe. Life can be better. Call the Hermosa Group now. Get a low monthly payment that fits your budget. Call now. I came to the University of Pittsburgh 
to learn with the best. At Pitt, we become better students. We learn that education extends beyond the classroom. At the University of Pittsburgh, we learn how to explore and discover. And how to gain knowledge from every experience. If we're known by the company we keep, then at the University of Pittsburgh, we are among the best. The month of December for the Pitt Panthers started down in Morgantown, West Virginia, the backyard brawl. And what a shocker it was. The Mountaineers were poised to go to the national championship game, but the Panthers and their defense had other ideas. And when the dust had settled at Mountaineer Field, it was a 13 to 9 shocker. The Panthers knocking off number two, West Virginia. And then late in December, the step back and the three pointer drained by LeVance Fields. Madison Square Garden, the scene. The opponent is Duke. Certainly the biggest win of the season as the Panthers held on to knock off Duke. And what a December for the Pitt Panthers. 65-64 was the final. We're happy to be joined here at the desk by Steve Peterson. As a matter of fact, the last time I talked to Steve Peterson, who was around in his second term as the athletics director at Pitt, it was on December the 1st, and you were getting ready to go down to Morgantown, weren't you? Did I predict, John, that we were going to go down there and win? Is I'm that gonna, what I'm <laughs> going to say now that you probably did? <laughs> it was a great night, and, and certainly really been a great December for the University of Pittsburgh and our um, athletic programs, and and we're very proud of what they did. You know, I I, uh, I said there were a lot of highlights. Um, certainly, winning the game was a highlight. I think the Coach Wanstatt captured the attention of the nation with his crutches and his, his uh, excitement during the game, and that was fun. And, and, uh, and then, of course, really the game in Madison Square Garden against Duke, um, preceded by a great win on the road at Washington, a great win here against Oklahoma State in the Peterson Center, and then to go on the road and beat Duke was pretty spectacular. And I'm very proud of what our teams are doing. Our women's basketball team's doing great, and that's exciting. Of course, you were part of the start of all of that, including hiring Ben Howland, the formation part of the decision to build the Peterson Center. All that goes back to your first tenure here. How are things different this time that you come back? Well, you know, I, I kiddingly say when we got here in, in uh, 96, everything needed to be done. <laughs> and, um, and fortunately, we have a great staff. Um, we have a lot of great people here, great coaches. Um, they're, they're doing a terrific job. And, and uh, so what I think our opportunities here now are to continue to capitalize on the, the successes we've had. Certainly, we um, have had an unbelievable run in basketball. It really is good as any program in the country. And, uh, and now with football, we're in, in a phase where we're taking the next step. And the, the steps that we've seen have been very exciting. And, uh, and certainly ending with the, the West Virginia game like we did was a great, a great boost going into next season. And we're excited about it. Recruiting's going well. And so it's, it's a lot of good things. It's going to be a test, though, for Jamie and the staff now without LeVance Fields. How, how's this team going to survive the injury situation? Well, you know, I guess as an athletic director, you're glad Jamie Dixon's coaching your basketball team because you know they're going to get the very best coaching in the country. You know, we're going to get everything we can out of the players that we have. And, and unfortunately, injuries are part of the game. Um, we've been struck with some pretty tough injuries um, by players that are not only outstanding players but outstanding people and leaders in our program. And so that kind of doubles up a little bit, and that means some younger people have to begin to play um, at a level that that's probably a little higher than they, uh, they would have anticipated at this point. But we have a lot of confidence in them, and Jamie and his staff will do a great job with them. All right. Thank you very much, Steve, as always. It's a pleasure. John You're Griffin not going Griffin. to any football game tonight, so stick around for the second <laughs> okay. half. Okay. Thank you very much. Steve Peterson, the uh, director of athletics at the University of Pittsburgh. His Panthers are down by two at halftime to the hot shooting, hot three-point shooting Leopards of Lafayette. We'll be back. I'd heard that eHarmony was the place to go. New Year's Eve day, I said, I'm ready for eHarmony. We've been waiting a long time to find each other. We were ready to start our lives together. This new year put falling in love at the top of your list. Busiest day of the year, December 31st. That was our very first date. Make this the year that it happens for you. It all starts with your personality profile. And right now you can review your matches absolutely free. eHarmony.com and action. GoDaddy is the world's number one in domain names, like mine, chadjohnson85.com. Chad, is that in the script? No, but hey, it's chadjohnson85.com, and I got it at GoDaddy. Cut. Dot com names at GoDaddy are just a buck 99. And visit chadjohnson85.com. Cut. <laughs> My bad. 
Dot-com name for just $1.99. Chad, Bob wants to see you and bring your script. It's over! It's over! The Orange have won it! Syracuse has won the national championship! And three times the champion, UConn wins the NCAA women's title for 2004! Want a great holiday gift idea for under $15? Introducing Microtouch Magic, the magical micro trimmer with the built-in light. It spotlights the hair and makes it disappear. Look, now you see it, now you don't. It magically goes where other trimmers can't. Embarrassing nose hair, gone like that. Unsightly ear hair, watch it disappear. Need to trim the back of your neck? With Magic, you can do it by yourself. It gets as close as a blade, yet it's safe to the touch. And the super bright light lets you see what you're doing and do the job right. So put a little magic in your life with the all-new Microtouch Magic, a $30 value for only $14.99. Plus, you'll receive our deluxe 10-piece grooming kit, complete with every grooming tool you need to always look your best. A $20 value absolutely free. But you have to call now. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-893-2186. That's 1-800-893-2186. Call now. ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by eHarmony.com. Are you ready to fall in love? We're on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh, very near to the Cathedral of Learning, and the Panthers are down by two at halftime. They've not trailed by at halftime very often this year. We welcome you back along with Mark Adams. I'm John Sanders. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. Panthers started out okay, and then the Leopards went to their favorite shot, the three-pointer, and just killed them. The Lafayette Leopards love the three-point shot. Inside-out basketball. Matt Bentley, five for five in the first half. They did it in full-court transition. 13 assists for Lafayette in the first half. As they distribute the ball, they constantly look for each other. They played as a team, and 13 Leopards saw action in the first half. Brando Hanlon going deep in his bench. The guy can coach. His team can shoot the basketball. Keith Benjamin needed to come up big for Jamie Dixon with the loss of Levance Fields and Mike Cook. And he has done exactly that. 11 points in the first half. This kid has come to life offensively and kept Pitt in the game. Now down by two points at halftime. I love Keith Benjamin's toughness and his willingness to play as a team with his teammates and come up big when they need him the most. Statistically, it looks like this. The three-pointer, the difference, as the Leopards are 11 of 18. Neither team did a whole lot at the line. The Panthers are the best free throw shooting team in the Big East right now, and that's a surprise. Points off turnover is fairly even. You see not much difference in the shooting percentage, but a three-pointer is the great equalizer. In this case, it's the thing that's giving you the lead. As far as adjustments go, if you're pit, never leave the shooter. Don't help off dribble penetration. Don't help down low. Just get into shooters. If you're Lafayette, more of the same. 2-3 zone, force a three-point shot, block off, get rebounds, and nail some threes in the second half. There's good defense to get the trap. Of course, that's tough to do because they're trained to help out. That's the way their defense plays. Ramon for three. Didn't have one in the first half. Kicks off the second half by giving the Panthers the lead. Now you need a little bit of leadership right there, and Ronald Ramon, a guy that can provide that leadership for Pitt. Abdullah tries to answer and does. That's his third. The senior from Anchorage, Alaska, reestablishes a two-point lead. Twelve three-pointers tonight. They just won't quit shooting, and they won't stop going in. And that time, a hand in his face as well. We've had five lead changes so far. Benjamin's three from the corner is good. He buries that one. That is his second. He's got 14 points. Ramon drains a three, and then the next possession gets an assist. Gives it off to Keith Benjamin in the corner. This is Abdullah again. Same starters both ways for both teams. Blair starting out there with Brown, Young, Ramon, and Benjamin. Lead to Young, makes the catch, head fake up and in. That's the first easy basket in a 94-foot situation that Pitt has gotten tonight. Starters for the Leopards, Betley, Schmidt, 
Bruner, Brown, and Abdullah. Although we did see a bunch of Leopards. Abdullah for three. That one misses, but the rebound pulled down by Schmidt, and then a reach-in foul called. Panthers able to push it after the steal by Blair. I love the wingspan of that big guy. Seven foot three inch wingspan showed right there as he gets the steal and then off the court it goes and the Pitt Panthers get a great look right there. As Sam Young converts. And there's a mistake. The pass was too far for Betley. You talked about that wingspan. Let's show you what Mark Adams is talking about as far as the big man, number 45. It also seems like he's seven feet three inches wide sometimes, doesn't it? Body wise. I mean, he's got he's a, a big boy. Got a great body, and you got to love the wingspan. It does two things. It makes him better defensively because he plays fingertip to fingertip. It also makes him a better rebounder. You can go up and grab that ball with two hands with that wingspan. Tried to go alley oop to Brown, didn't work out. The Brown for Lafayette gets inside, resets now with Gruner. This is Brown. Benjamin jumps out on him. It's been fairly good against him. He's only got two three-pointers. Knocked away, almost stolen. Brown for three. No good. Rebound on the weak side by Bentley. Abdullah again. Lafayette's going to make you play some defense. They, they like to spread the court, get a couple of back cuts to the basket. Oh. Great look, great look. He faked the three-pointer that time. Bentley now has matched his season high with 17. His career high is 19. That was much easier than the five three-pointers they made in the first half. How about Bilal Abdullah? We saw him bang the three that time. Defenders running out to him. Little head fake, got in the gap. Little shovel pass inside. Young to the baseline is bumped out of bounds. The foul will go on Schmidt. That's three on him. Look at both defenders come out on Bilal Abdullah because he shoots the three so well, and Matt Bentley just slips to the basket. When you shoot it that well, like Abdullah does, defenders have to react. That's what gave up the pass inside. And Brown will sit down right now. Ramon for three, made one earlier. He's got two in a row in the second half. And the Panthers stretch it out by four. When Jamie Dixon down a defensive stance, he wants defense right now from his Pitt Panthers. He wants pressure defense from Pitt. Brown set to return for Lafayette. Bentley for three. Bending, bending, good! Unbelievable. That's a career game for Bentley. His sixth three-pointer. He has 20 on the night. Sam Young got a little greedy there, went for the steal, left Bentley wide open. That one didn't swish, but it rolled in. Benjamin from outside buries that short jumper. 16 now for Keith Benjamin, closing in on his career best. Panthers by three. Action picking up early on here in the second half. The question without LeVance Fields, would the, would the guards be good enough? Ramon and Benjamin have been sterling here to start the second half. Abdullah thought about three. Has it almost stolen by Benjamin. Gets it back, spins it up, no good. And over the back, the foul goes on Ted Detmer. 52-49, the Panthers trail by two at halftime. But they're up by three right now. ESPN360.com, your online home for Capital One Bowl Week. How many expensive disposable razors or blades do you throw away every year? 30, 50, more? Isn't it time you got the one razor you can use forever? The Infinity Razor. Twin blades forged from carbon-injected steel and fused with rugged tungsten carbide for a razor that never loses its edge. In fact, if the Infinity Razor ever stops giving you a smooth, comfortable shave, we'll replace it free. I've been using my Infinity Razor for five months. Even after we use this Infinity Razor to shave this sandpaper clean, it can still shave this delicate balloon. Shh, don't tell my husband. But I use his Infinity Razor all the time, and he doesn't even notice. No more dragging, no more nicking, because Infinity is the one razor that stays sharp forever to give you a lifetime of smooth, comfortable shaves. The Infinity Razor is the best razor I've ever used, and the best money I've ever spent. How much does it cost for the last razor you'll ever buy? Just $19.95. Plus, call today and we'll include a second Infinity Razor absolutely free. It's perfect for traveling. Or since you'll never need another Infinity Razor, you can give one to a friend. 
I bought the Infinity Razor for my guy, and I love to smooth close shave so much, I had to buy one for myself. Now she won't have to because you'll get a second Infinity Razor free. And that's still not all. Call now and you'll also get the Razor Sharp Infinity Micro Trimmer, a $15 value, absolutely free. Plus this fogless mirror, a $20 value. That's a total value of over $74, yours for only $19.95. You'll also get two guarantees, a 30-day money-back satisfaction guarantee and our exclusive lifetime replacement guarantee. So call 1-800-239-2146 now for the last razor you'll ever buy, the Amazing Lifetime Infinity Razor for $19.95 plus shipping. Call 1-800-239-2146 and get a second Infinity Razor, the Infinity Micro Trimmer, and our fogless mirror free. That's 1-800-239-2146. Call now. Panthers have the lead 52 to 40 and 39. We've talked a lot about the outside shooting of Lafayette, but the Panthers here in the second half have kind of answered that. Keith Benjamin and Ronald Ramon have gone off as we take a look at Ramon, one of the most efficient three-point shooters in pit history. Now with the assist off to Keith Benjamin, who's known for his off-the-bench stellar defense, but Ramon and Benjamin have loaded it up. Benjamin now with 16 points on the night. They needed his offense. They're getting his offense right now. You see eight points for Ronald Ramon, including two three-pointers in the second half. He did not have a field goal in the first half. Some pressure now from the Leopards. Handled by Benjamin to Ramon. Brown will pick him up. Lafayette now out of their 2-3 zone, going man-to-man -man for the first time tonight. This is where Pitt can really expose the post with Ron Blair down low, Just along like with Sam that. Young. Just like that, Young puts it up and draws the foul. Detmer will pick up his third foul as Young goes to the line for the second time tonight. Here's what you're talking about, Mark. Absolutely. As soon as Lafayette goes man to man, game plan is to dump it down low into Sam Young and Dwan Blair. Those two guys are a dynamic duo from block to block. Young is six feet six inches tall, but he can jump a lot higher than that. He is a jumping jack, as a matter of fact. He's a hard matchup because he can take you down low on the block. He can make the three. We've seen him go after the offensive glass. He's a very difficult matchup. Wanamaker has checked in for Pittsburgh, and they have matched their biggest lead, a four-point edge. And that will go the other way. Bentley could not hang on. It's 53-49. Panthers trying to put a little daylight between them and the Leopards here. Lafayette staying with the man-to-man. -man. Look for Pitt to go down low again. You know, I'm talking to Coach O'Hanlon. He said, how do you guys feel? He said, they're excited for the opportunity. You know it's not going to be easy, but they're excited for the chance to play against a ranked team. Blair lost it. Benjamin gets it back. It was kicked. Kick no, so the shot clock at 15 will be reset, I think, to 15. It's at 12 right now. They put it back to 15. They do. Good look at Fran O'Hanlon right there. Coached overseas for a long time. High school. Yeah, he was overseas for 12 years, either as a player or a coach. Coaching the Israeli professional league. Ramon for his third three of the second half. Give Ronald 11, and he is warming up with 15 to play. The Panthers have opened it up by seven. That through shoulder looks like it's improving right before our very eyes for Ronald Ramon. Had a little heat pack on it at halftime or something because it does look better. He's got a great stroke when he gets open and can set himself. The dump down, the turnaround is up and good. Nicely done that time. That's to Jared Mintz getting his first basket of the night. Cuts the lead back to five. Each team has had a seven point lead at various times during this game tonight. Thank you for joining us on ESPNU. Happy New Year from Pittsburgh. See if Pitt continues to pound it inside, either off the dribble or the pass. Blocking foul called on Abdullah. It looked like it was going to be a turnover. Instead, the call goes against Bilal Abdullah. He picks up his second. He didn't like it. And Biggs checks into the lineup. Ronald Ramon. Heating it up in the second half with three three-pointers. Has nine already in this half. 11 for the night. Here he is again. They jumped out on him in a heartbeat that time. Inside Biggs and one. Foul goal on Mintz. 
Jonathan Biggs, who had seven in the first half, now has nine on the night. Nice look down low, and that's what they can do in that man-to-man -man defense. Since Lafayette has switched up their defense, Pitt has done a good job. There's the trap in the corner, the reversal. Look at all the Pitt Panthers. They were anticipating a reversal pass by Benjamin. Little pump fake, dumps it inside to Biggs. 58-51. The lead is seven. Brown for three from the corner, bending oh. off. There's a push on the play. I don't know about the basket. Friday night ESPNU dishes out more college basketball action as the Fairfield Stags face the Loyola Marymount, Loyola Maryland Greyhounds. College basketball on ESPNU Friday night at 7 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. That's an offensive foul. The second on Bentley. But Jamie Dixon has made all of the adjustments here to start the second half. Offensively getting Sam Young involved, Ron Blair involved, obviously Ramon Raymond. Excuse me, Ronald Ramon of Pitt able to knock down some threes. And this team's hitting on all cylinders offensively right now. Now Benjamin with it. Wanamaker, that's going to be a first step travel. He made the shot, but it was too late. Still a seven-point lead for the Panthers. Back into the lineup is Mike Gruner. To the bench goes Abdullah. Almost every whistle, there's a substitution coming in for the Leopards. Well, they shoot so many threes, you never want to have tired legs in the lineup. Well, they don't. They stay fresh. And that's one thing you worry about, I guess, is you shot them so well with three-pointers. If you get a little tired, it's going to make a difference in that shot. Bruner to Brown almost lost it. The Leopards keep it alive. 15 on the shot clock. I like Pitt much more aggressive in the perimeter defense. Oh, nice move and a scoop half. shot by Gruner. That's his first basket of the game. Nothing long range about that. He took it to the hole. Comes Gruner, to a five-point lead now. Gruner also part of that foreign connection for Fran O'Hanlon. Wanamaker inside. Fade away. Biggs got it. 11 for Tyrell Biggs. He's played well off the bench. Back to that seven-point advantage. The inside out. Offense for Pitt. Very impressive here in the second half. There's another three on the way. That one's good. The fourth on the night for Cummins. The young man from Ireland has a dozen. And it's a four-point game again. What a weapon the three is for Lafayette. And Cummins, almost 80% of his shots come from behind the arc also. So there's just so many Lafayette Leopards. I mean, Fran O'Hanlon, when he goes out recruiting, he's looking for one thing, guys that can shoot the rock. Wanamaker for three. Just his second three-pointer of the season. He has five. Wanamaker has the answer, and the lead goes back to seven. Bradley Wanamaker, very well set up, well balanced. Well, the Panthers are hot in the second half. They are nine of nine shooting, and four of them have been three-point baskets. So Pitt has had the answer, at least here in the second half, to the three-pointers. That one pushes the lead back to seven on ESPNU. Wouldn't it? Downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh in Oakland, not far from downtown. And the Panthers have opened up a seven-point lead here in the second half. But they have been shocked by the three-point shooting of the Lafayette Leopards in this game. How about that? Lafayette, one of the great shooting teams in the country, 41% from downtown, 14 made tonight. Ties the most ever allowed by a Pitt defensive team. And the amazing thing, only four Leopards have made threes. Matt Bedley, Andrew Brown, Bilal Abdullah, and Paul Cummins have accounted for all of those three-pointers. Now, one guy made five by himself in the first half, so that kind of accounts for a lot of <laughs> it's it pretty right good there. Night. He's only seven for seven tonight, Matt Bedley. Six for six from three. It's a pretty fair night. That's a three on the way. Too strong. Rebound by Ronald Ramon. Panthers trying to stretch their lead. Ramon inside to Blair. Powers his way up and scores. Well, how good. Blair. 
How good has Pitt been in the second half, just getting the ball down low, letting the big guys go to work? Now it's a nine-point lead. Good backdoor play, and a foul on Benjamin, his first. Haven't seen that too much. They pretty much stayed on the perimeter, but that time they went to the cutting player and almost got a basket out of it. They do get the foul. Benjamin will pick up number one. That means the Leopards will be at the line when we come back here on ESPNU. We're back on ESPNU College Basketball for Pittsburgh. The Oakland Zoo not as full as normal, maybe because the students are on break. And they just had a roar because they showed Levance Fields on the big scoreboard screen up above. And the question was, who was going to replace Lance Fields? That's what everybody was asking coming in tonight. Well, Ramon and Benjamin have combined for 27 points. Not too bad. They've done a tremendous job, and Keith Benjamin had to step up. He's going to play more. He's going to have to take more of the load. He's taking on that load tonight. Bruner did not score in the first half. That's his third point here in the second half. A pair at the foul line. There's the man of the hour, Levance Fields. Oh, there's a smile on his face. He has that pin in his foot, and they're hoping with the rehab that he'll get back maybe sooner than forecast. We'll see. I'd have a smile on my face, too, if I hit the shot to beat Duke a few weeks ago. <laughs> That's true. What a tremendous shot. You'd never take that smile off your face, would you? Ramon outside, handles to Wanamaker, the dump down to Blair. He uses his body, backs his defender down, and the fadeaway won't go, but he will go to the line. LeVance Field hitting one of the most memorable shots of Pitt. Look at him step back and just drive that thing. Rip it through. One well, of the tremendous victories. LeVance Fields almost kicks his coach right in the face. He's talking on the phone. They're saying, hey, you're on right now. Just saw you hit the shot to beat Duke. Blair at the line is three for three. Nine points for the freshman from Shenley High in Pittsburgh. We have three subs back in now for the Leopards. Brown is back on. Of course, Bentley, who's been a real pain to the Panthers tonight, is back out there. High arcing free throw won't go, and there's the rebound and the putback. I tell you, Tyrell Biggs with 13. That is a career high for the junior from New York. And it's a 10-point lead. First double-digit lead we've had either way tonight. Well, when you lose that, as many players, four players off the roster from the original season roster, everybody's got to step up. Tyrell Biggs also in the action. Biggs has played well off the bench. Tried to dump it down inside that time to Mintz. It's tapped away by the Panthers. So with five on the shot clock, the Leopards will get it back. They trail by 10, 68-58. But it's been some hard work here in the second half by the Panthers, and that goes right into the hands of Dewan Blair. It's been the hard work on the defensive end. I don't have any problem with what Pitt did in the first half offensively, but they've really done a, a much better job of mastering the perimeter shooter in the second half. Gilbert Brown hands to Wanamaker. Here comes Ramon. Down the lane, gives it up for the baseline shot and a finish. Tyrell Biggs with 15 points. Panthers by 12. Well, Biggs known more as an offensive rebounding dynamo, but he's shown a little bit of his mid-range game tonight. Bentley gets inside, has it blocked, got it back. Guess who blocked it? Tyrell Biggs. Bentley gets inside and he turns it over. He banged his nose on the floor. Brown for three. Got it. Panthers are 12 of 12 in the second half, and all of a sudden they lead it big time, and a timeout taken. The Panthers have opened it up by 15, and they can't miss in the second half. And Tyrell Biggs, a big reason, giving a big lift off the bench. Knocks down the 17-foot jump shot. How about Ramon just finding open people? And the Pitt Panthers doing it inside, doing it outside. Gilbert, downtown Brown. You know, we were wondering at halftime if Lafayette was ever going to cool off. They're now wondering if the Panthers are ever going to cool off because they've made 12 in a row. 
When you lose LeVance Fields, everybody has to contribute. Look at the balanced scoring of the Pitt Panthers. Benjamin with 16. We said he's got to step up. He has. Biggs off the bench with 15. Young with 12. Ramon with 11. Let's go, Pitt! Let's go, Pitt! Jamie Dixon, just too good a coach. These players too talented to allow any excuses to take place. Okay, they lost to Dayton. The street group come home, get ready to play in the Big East. They're doing that tonight. Abdullah with a drive and an erratic shot around the rebound. Benjamin is back in there. He'll bring it back. Bentley sets down for a while for Lafayette, being treated over there on the bench by the trainer, Stephanie Conlon. They've got the ice out working on his left leg. I would think his arm would be tired the way he shot it tonight. <laughs> the guy's down his right arm. Young draws a crowd, steps in, misses the shot, gets it back. It's loose. Still scrambles wow. for it. Got it and puts it in. stick to it of nuts for Sam Young. He's got 14. That's a one-two thing. Surrounded by four maroon jerseys, but yet Sam Young comes up with the basketball. Brown tries to cut off the run and does. His first basket in the second half, third three-pointer, 11 for him. And it goes back to a 14-point difference. And that is the most three-point baskets ever made against the University of Pittsburgh. Two hands on the touch, and the foul called on Andrew Brown. It'll be his first. Well, for Lafayette, that's the good news. 15 made, just set a school record. The bad news is down 14. Andrew Brown, we talked about him in our open. He's a guy you've got to respect, the leading scorer for Lafayette. Benjamin to the line. As we're now in the bonus, that's the eighth foul. Benjamin hits that one. He's having a very, very good night. As a matter of fact, that basket matches his career high set earlier this year of 17. So he's got a career high. Biggs with a career high. Now we've seen him go on streaks before, and he's definitely on a streak tonight. We typically see him fill his role more as a defender, but offensively, he is just letting it fly with confidence. We're at the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh, a matchup of the Patriot League and the Big East. Brown again for three. That one won't go. The offensive rebound and a block. Young got the block. Abdullah will shoot a three from straight away, and he hits that one. That's a dozen for Abdullah. Along with Mark Adams, I'm John Sanders, and what a three-point shooting exhibition we've had tonight. Can they get 23s tonight, you think? Well, they're closing in. We've still got eight in. minutes to go. I know. It's a long ways to go. Inside, Young makes the catch, spins, goes to the basket, misses the shot. The putback is there. And Biggs continues to celebrate a career night. 17 for him. It's been the B&B &B brothers as Keith Benjamin and Tyrell Biggs. Each time down, they just contribute another deuce or a tray. Go on, Kev. Everest makes the catch inside, turns, puts it up, won't go. Rebound Young. Sam Young is in his head right now. That block shot on the previous possession. Counting down to seven minutes left. The Panthers lead it by 15. How can you make that many three-pointers and be 15 points down? I mean, that's, that's the question you have to wonder. I think because of the combination of, of Sam Young with Biggs and Benjamin going off, Ramon banging threes. Take it out. Pitch shot the ball well also. Brown got to the baseline, drew the foul from Schmidt. He will pick up his third. It has been a big night for Tyrell Big. He has 10 points in the seventh, second half. He has a career high. That putback gives him 17 and adds to the Panther lead. Seventy nine sixty four the Panthers have given up more three pointers to an opposing team than ever here in this building tonight As a matter of fact the three point shooting both ways has been dynamic and look at the change first half to second half for the Panthers who made it only two they've rarely missed in the second half and Lafayette 11 for 18 in the first half is shooting a paltry 50 percent from three <laughs> in the second half. I don't know that I've ever seen a shooting display quite like this one over the course of the game between both teams, actually. Gilbert Brown, who's 8 of 10 at the foul line, will get his first chance. There's a glimpse at Tyrell Biggs, who's played well, and that's the kind of thing they need to happen. I think two real pluses here tonight. One is Benjamin, 
and the other has to be Biggs. And John, when you go through injuries like the Pitt Panthers have, it, it affects you from a practice perspective. It also affects you, obviously, from a numbers perspective on the court. And Tyrell Biggs decided, hey, it's time for me to step up, and he has. But that's called a program, not a team. And that's what Jamie Dixon has built. That's what Ben Howland built before him. Well, Jamie Dixon actually made a call to the football program to see if they had any bodies who'd like to come practice. And there's an easy steal for Benjamin. Brown will try to track him down. And does. And John, when you start calling football players for practice, this is generally what happens. Let's take a look at Connor Barwin at University of Cincinnati when That's they were right. down. Josh Chichester, who's a wide receiver for the Louisville football team, as we take a look at the at the steal here by the Pitt defense. Josh Chichester also was called up by Louisville from their wide receiver position. Now he's playing for Rick Patino. <laughs> they lost to Cincinnati the other night. I like football players. I don't like them as basketball players. <laughs> well. As it turns out, they still have 11 available players for practice, so technically they don't need any more, but Benjamin will add to his career high. Now with 19, it's 82-64. They've opened up an 18-point lead. That is the biggest of the night. I'll bet Dave Wanstatt would step in and take a charge. Uh, not until he gets a little better <laughs> off his crutches. That's right, he's injured too. That's right. Can't use him either. <laughs> 83-64 with just over six to play. The dominating second half by the Pitt Panthers. Bentley has it stripped. End. Here's another three on the way. No good. That foul is going to go on Brown. Gilbert will pick up his third. The scramble for the loose ball, he grabbed an arm. Jamie Dixon comes from that Jerry Pym coaching pedigree. Jerry, of course, was the great head coach at Utah and at Santa Barbara. It all starts with great defense, and it's definitely a start with great defense here in the second half. The Panthers gave up that rash of three-pointers in the first half. A nice drive and fish finish. Sam Young with 16, closing in on his season average. Set up beautifully by Ramon, and the lead is 21. Well, this has been impressive in the second half, and it takes a little time to adjust to not having a LeVance Fields. I think we're seeing this team adjust right now. Foul number four called on Gilbert Brown. Well, I think they had to find out among themselves, too, as we look at the replay, how would they play without LeVance Fields? They had practiced without him, getting ready for the game since Saturday, but it's a little different when you tie him up and play for real. And Jamie Dixon, the guy that certainly understands his personnel well, and. Ronald Ramon is a guy I think that has taken over that leadership role at the point guard position with LeVance Fields sitting out. They needed somebody to step up and fill that void. Ronald Ramon is doing that. Brown will set, Biggs will set. Abdullah will have one more coming at the line. Hits them both. Give him 14 on the night. And Ramon working on Gruner. Off the Blair screen. Blair wanted it back. He gets it low. And he traveled. A little extra head fake cost him. Well, it wasn't just the travel either, it was the right elbow that he shoved into the gut of the defender as well. Jamie Dixon pleading his case as Brown checks back in for Lafayette. Gruner goes to the bench. 85-66, yes. Speaking of football players, I think Juan Blair could play a little tight end. <laughs> yes, he could. A la Sam Clancy, huh? He knocks it away. Another steal. Three on one. alley -oop Young missed the shot. Got the alley -oop from the wrong guy that time. Abdullah streaks back, lost it out of bounds. It'll be Panther basketball with 4.54 to play. Women's college basketball continues on ESPNU Wednesday night. Candace Parker and the Lady Bulls against the DePaul Blue Demons. Women's college basketball in ESPNU Wednesday night at 9 Eastern. Log on to ESPNU.com and you're right, that game is a sellout. So I know my women's hoops. There you do, I know. Pat Summit could coach men's basketball and win national championships. She's that good. Here's Young down the lane. Is fouled on the way. 
That'll go on Benbo and all 13 have played. You talked about Pat Summit. Look at those numbers, huh? The all-time winningest coach in NCAA history, period. I rest my case. But the dreaded Yukon Huskies are number one. Yes, again. they're very good. Gino <laughs> does a great job yes, as well. Yes, he does. He's had pretty good success, hasn't he? Oh, and by the way, she also graduates 100% of her players every year, too. That's not a bad number. The Leopards graduate 83% of theirs. They're in the top 10 academically. Gotten some awards from the NCAA being recognized for that. A pair missed at the line. Biggs kept it alive momentarily. <laughs> Tried to dump it down inside, but there were too many white jerseys there. Wanamaker comes back the other way for Pitt. You have three guards. Biggs plays like a guard. Young plays like a guard. So basically, you've got five guys that can play all over the court. Young, down the lane, is fouled on his way in. John, you bring up a great point there, and that Pitt can go small, they can go athletic, but when you've got a Sam Young on the floor, and he's going to be a guy that can go get you offensive rebounds. Tyrell Biggs is athletic, lean, lithe enough to go up and get you some as well. And then you bring big old Dwan Blair out. You know, and let him go down and bang a little bit down low to change the, the scenery a little bit. This team still has weapons without LeVance Fields. And when we come back after this next break, you'll find out more about Dewan Blair and where he came from and maybe a little bit about why he decided on Pittsburgh. And he misses for the fourth straight time at the line. Back the other way is Ben Wheeler. So all 13 have played tonight for Lafayette, and that pass from Brown goes nowhere. It was intended for Jared Mintz, but it goes out of bounds. Well, Lafayette could take a very positive first half out of this game with some great video to, to review as far as from the positive side. And Pitt, conversely, defensively, has just been so tough here in the second half getting out on shooters. They tightened it up, didn't they? Very Ratcheted much so. it down, I'll tell you that. Here's Benjamin looking for three on the way. No good. Rebound to Brown. Back comes Lafayette with 3.40 to go in the game. The sock is handled. Now Wheeler with it. Look at that pit back. Door Brown shoots it up, missed the shot. He was too close to the basket that time. Hey, you get him extended, you can go ahead and back cut. That's what Lafayette's looking for right now, but definitely not as effective as when they were banging threes in the first half. This pit was just kind of laying back. Now they're more aggressive looking for the back cuts for Lafayette. Benjamin to Biggs, tapped away from behind, he gets it back, shoots the baseline jumper, bending out. And the rebound by Young, and one. Sam Young with 18. And he'll get a chance to go to 19 as he goes to the line. But first, we'll take a break. We talked about Dewan Blair. He'll be your host when we come back. Now I'm a GoDaddy customer. As the world's number one receiver. What's up, everyone? I'm Dewan Blair, and behind me is the house that I grew up in, 600 yards away from the Pittsburgh Peterson Event Center. This is Shelley High School, right down the road from Pittsburgh Peterson Event Center. In my career, we went 57 and 0. Last year, I brought home the state title. This is one of my favorite people here at Shelley. My principal, Sophia Vicaris. Uh, we spent a lot of time together, but I was never called to her office. <laughs> <laughs> this hoop right here is where I got my first dunk at. I didn't believe it, so I dunked 10 times straight after that. Right here is where I committed to college. I decided to stay home and go to Pitt, and the rest is history. Great job, nice young man. He's one of the few guys out of the seven. They've only played seven men tonight, and uh, four of them are in double figures. Young finishes off the three-point play. He's got 19. He had missed four straight at the line until he made that. Back to a 22-point lead. That's the largest of the evening, 88-66. The Sockets on a drive. Has that one partially blocked by Biggs. Tapped away and picked up by Ronald Ramon. Inside, three minutes left. Oh. Oh. Got somehow. Biggs wound up with the ball, and he's got 19 points. He's out of his mind in the second half. When things are going good, they're going real good. They're going great for Tyrell Biggs. 
Student section starting to chant his name. <laughs> I'm not sure they knew who he was before tonight. They do now. So do we. Reach in foul on Benjamin. Keith will pick up his second. The Panthers now will bring in Casson Diggs, number 50, so he is the eighth Panther to play in the game as Brown also returns. Benjamin, a great hand for him and Young as they head to the bench. Benjamin with a career night, 20 points, getting his first start of the season in the absence of Levance Fields. I think initially the question has been answered about the, the injury to Levance Fields. Who will step in and play? Keith now, Benjamin. The next question is what happens when Big East play begins this weekend? And that means road trips to Villanova and South Florida to start the Big East regular season for Pittsburgh. Corey Fisher and Scotty Reynolds for Villanova. I saw them earlier this year. Two great guards. Corey Fisher, a point guard that can reel and deal. Calling Fisher Price because his ability to toy with his opponents. Let's take a deeper look at that schedule for Pittsburgh. We mentioned the trips to Villanova and South Florida. Then they've got Seton Hall and Georgetown at home, back on the road against Cincinnati and St. John's. The Panthers have shot 78% in the second half. What a turnaround. Yeah, at South Florida is not a gimme either. I like no. Kentrell Gransbury, big, strong guy, one of the leading rebounders in the Big East. Dominique Jones, one of the great freshmen in the Big East that you haven't heard a lot about, but he can play South Florida, not a pushover at all. Here's Wanamaker. Backdoor play Brown underneath the basket, all the way out to Ramon. Gets it back for three on the way. Good. Rattled it home. Brown with a three pointer. It's his seventh three pointer of the year, gives him 10 on the night. And it's 93 to 67. And remember, Lafayette was up two at halftime. That's right. They were up 41 to 39. By the way, the 18 three pointers that they've made, not only a record allowed by Pittsburgh, the most they've ever made in school history. And I've got five fouls on Gilbert Brown. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. That is. He'll be gone. So he finishes in double figures with 10. Five Panthers in double figures. Brown making his second start and now checking in Maurice Poland one of the two walk-ons and there's the other walk-on right there Tim Fry checking into the lineup so the only Panther who hasn't played so far is McGee well, Jamie Dixon wondered how his team would react to the injury and the 25 point loss at Dayton Exams are over, but the second half, I think this team has definitely passed the test. At least the first test. There are a lot more to come, and the tests will get tougher from here on out. And the Big East just loaded with talent. I like Georgetown as my number one pick. Of course, Roy Hibbert coming back. And tested the NBA waters, decided to come back from the final 14 from a year ago. John Thompson the third. But you know, Hibbert's numbers so far are not what maybe a lot of people expected. He's not the leading scorer on his team. No, he's not. But I think he's a guy that in this conference, a big guy like that can make a, such a huge difference as a certain year ago. Wheeler all the way for a basket. And of the 13 that have played, 11 have scored in the game for Lafayette, and they're still down 93 to 71. And Biggs has been a big factor tonight. Another team I like in the Big East is Marquette. Whoa, how about Fry? He had five points in four games coming into tonight, and he buries a three as they close in on 100. It's 96-71. That's a three-pointer. So 19. number 19, they Could add get to the 20, record. John. Could get 20. Well, you called for it earlier. I'm not sure if there's enough time left. 96-74. You buy if they get 20. Absolutely. <laughs> of course, I'll just have a Sprite. Good. That's all you're buying, right? <laughs> That's one in the correct. Press room. You got it. Loose ball, scramble for it, picked up by Diggs. Dribbling on the ground, finally found Biggs with 10 on the shot clock, 20 in the game. Well, Curly Haynes right there dribbling yeah. on the floor. <laughs> he just kept bouncing it. Here he comes down the lane. Offensive foul. So Casson Diggs will pick up the foul, the Cloud County Junior College transfer, with 13 seconds left in the game. 96 74 is our score. I want to see a three right now. Bury the three. There it goes. It does go. The three is on the way. Comes up short. Stop that. I'll get you a sprite anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if 
foul is on Wanamaker. It's number four on him. That gives some credit to Fran O'Hanlon coming in here with a great game plan. This Lafayette crowd had this this crowd sitting on their hands for all of the first half. Is they just kept banging three after three. Very well prepared team. They're going to do a great job in the Patriot League. And Eleven three pointers in the opening half will do it. That'll take the starch out of a lot of teams. And the Panthers fought that off, trailed by two at halftime, and then defensively went to work in the second half. Carey gets his fourth point. 96-75 is going to be the final score. So a terrific job by the Pitt Panthers in the second half as they roll to a 96-75 victory. They're now 11-1. That's our final. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's Tennessee DePaul Women's College Basketball. For more, log on to ESPNU.com. For the crew, I'm John Sanders. Good night.